everyone and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. Today I'm not inside the goat's pen and they're pretty upset with me so if you hear some noise in the background just know it's because of that. But I recorded a couple of videos a couple of days ago or over the weekend and when I checked the footage something was wrong with the light. I think my ISO was too high and something was not good. So I've decided to redo the parts that are unwatchable and kind of share with you um, a few thoughts on different things that are happening in the farm right now. Now, there are a lot of farm channels out there and sometimes I do get a little bit of hate for sharing some things that are not going right. However, I don't ever want to be a channel where I show just the beautiful sunny days and the goats eating in the pastures and just that's not part of who I am and I think I was pretty clear about that when I did the Q&A or Q&A slash hate comments that I got after vlog march. Uh, if you're new around here, I did a new video every day for the month of March while kidding season was happening. And if you missed it, I'm going to have a playlist up here. But it was exposed to more people and different people have different opinions on what you should share or not share on your channel. However, you know, every time I read one of those comments, I question myself if it's something that I should share or not when a problem comes up. But in the end, I there's going to be people that are going to think that it's all drama for attention and there's going to be other people that are going to be like, oh, thank you for sharing this, this actually helped me. So I'm never going to please everyone and I know that. But for that reason, I decided to share this video with you and it's when things don't go as planned. When things are really not working out, and it's just not one thing not working out right now, but kind of a series of things that are kind of overwhelming, if I'm being honest. Now, the number one thing is this budding. I was talking to Heather at Sage and Stone Homestead. I, I was gonna say I was talking to Sage and Stone Homestead. I was talking to Heather. And we were talking about skirts and, you know, she was sharing um, her experience with her bugs that develop skirts and stuff like that. And, you know, I was telling her that is why I'm always kind of on top of things. So I disbud the boys, I make sure it's done right, but then it happens. Sometimes they just grow skirts. So... That's what happens with a few of the kids. Now, she was telling me that right now, Titus is, um, maybe she doesn't want to share this, but I think it was in the comments, so I'm sure she'd be okay with it. But she was saying that the way that the skirt is growing, there's no way that you can burn it. And that got me thinking in sharing this piece of information, just in case you have a baby that will present these things, then you know what it means. And basically, when do you know if you have to re-disbud your baby goat? When do you know that you didn't do a good job or, you know, that it needed to go for a bit longer or maybe get a bigger area? When do you know? Well, my number one tip is as soon as they lose the hard caps, you're going to be able to see what's underneath. If what's underneath is round and kind of protruding, it's like... Um, little circle on top or it looks like a little mountain it's not flat that's what i mean when it's not flat and when it's red so it needs to be kind of round looking like it's growing from the inside and kind of with a round top and red usually in my experience it means that it's going to grow a skirt i don't know if you'll be able to see but do you see how round the top of that horn looks like the other one is still here, but I can feel that it's going to be some roundness, some roundness underneath. He is going places. I kind of go back to when this was happening to Rocky and Duke 
and that's exactly what I saw in them and they develop skirts. I didn't disbud them, but I did see that on them and they develop skirts later on. Okay, so, now that you have a better idea, I'm gonna try to freeze the frame for you so you can kind of see exactly what I mean by a rounded top, circle, and red. That is what I mean. When you need to this bud, that's what you're looking for. Or at least that's what I'm looking for. So right now, I'm gonna have to this bud again, at least three of my kids. The two that I just showed you, and I think there's a little girl that also needs to be touched up. Now, I don't like to do this, but I don't like to deal with skirts later on in life. So, now that I'm gonna read this bud them, that cap is gonna fall in a couple of weeks and if I see again that there is something growing underneath it's round and trying to protrude and, and you'll see that it's growing and then what I do is reburn. Now I've done this at least four times in um, don't know I want to say three three or four times last year with four boys that I had and I was learning how to do it and I just had to do it I know some people is gonna hate me for it but believe me it's gonna help them a lot more in the long run to not have horns than just say okay they suffer enough one time they don't need to go through it again so if you are at that stage where their caps are lifting and it's showing what's underneath, if it's presenting any of those things, I always read this bud. And that's why I'm doing it again. And that's something that I really wasn't planning on doing. I thought that with a figure eight was going to be something that works. And it did work for most of them, but not every single one of them. And it could be because of the placement of my iron. Maybe I didn't put it exactly where it should go on top of the bud. Maybe I did it a little bit deeper on one side, but not another. Who knows exactly what should have been done better. All I know is that three kids need to be disbudded. And we have 14 kids, and I think we only had three that ended up being pulled. So. I've done many of them, three or four that I'm gonna have to retouch because I already did one. It's really not a bad number. Another thing that, it's kind of weird, but it's driving me absolutely insane is the fact that the kids are chewing on each other's ears. Not all of them, but there's like a few of them that all they wanna do is go into nap time and chew on each other's ears. And I'm gonna show you, but there's this little boy that I need to retouch his um, this budding but he also is kind of it he has a cut in his ear and blood or all, all around it and it's because one of the kids and I'm assuming that is the black boy Clara's boy that got a hold of his ear and chewed it off I mean at this point I don't know who else would have done that I know that little black boy Clara's boy is obsessed obsessed on biting he is not so much about chewing but he's obsessed with biting and he's always been that way um his sister i mean she's trained to the bottle he is trained to the bottle uh, i have a few kids that are really good on the bottle and they don't do that he's the one that just does it and it really upsets me because he is you know if he's chewing on an adult ear then that's okay because you know they're gonna make him go away but if it's a little kid they just don't feel it immediately and like on this boy he really cut his ear and now i'm gonna have to keep an eye on it which I've been, but it's one more thing that I'm like, really? Now with him, I do have another problem and I'm gonna show you and is the fact that somebody is chewing on his ears. Can you see it right there? Maybe you'll see it on this one. That is chewed off. Like that is a part of his ear that somebody chewed and um, it's actually, there's like a cut in the ear. This is Bree's boy and he is very mellow, very sweet. He is not, you know, the smallest. He is very, look, he's gonna go by the kitty. He's not scared of anything, but 
he's very much always with his mom taking naps and all the other kids enjoy that time and and so the other kids um, go and pick on him especially this one this is the tiny he used to be tiny not anymore Clara's boy and he loves to chew on everything and yes he did take the bottle but even before I don't know why I always get one chewer biter however you want to call it and they're biting each other's ears a lot but he is the one that bites and actually hurts others so it's it's pretty crazy how he cut a piece of his ear right here so maybe I should name him Mike Tyson what do you think you can go with your friend and then finally Clarita Clarita is still not doing great she's not having diarrhea right the second she is not at that point but she's still really sad she's still very cold and she's still shaking and hunched and I sent a fecal and it should be back before Friday the results to me and she's gonna be seen on Friday so hopefully we'll have those results and we can kind of decide with a good um, physical exam if there is something that she's needing, if it's something that she's fighting, if it's some kind of warm load. Her Fomacha score is amazing. It's as red as it could be, but you know, you just never know what else it could be. And I really don't want her suffering unnecessarily. Unfortunately, um, it's, it's a tricky situation to kind of get an appointment with a vet that will see goats here. So it's gonna have to wait until Friday. But in the meantime, I'm gonna bring her in and I am either going to let her stay inside at night with us and bring her outside during the day and kind of go back and forth and see how she does or keep her 100% of the time inside with maybe a buddy and uh, wait and just wait until we can get that fecal back. Uh, right now she's getting all the help that she can. If it's a rumen problem, she's getting vitamin B injections and she's getting probiotics. So that is all that I can do with the symptoms that she has right now. And then once the fecal comes back, we'll figure it out if there's something else that she's dealing with. At this point, what my vet friend said is that she thinks that she just has an upset stomach and that's why she is acting that way. She probably kind of messed up her rumen and it's just gonna take time to go back to working properly. For babies, um, they really do take some time to go back to their normal selves. So that is what I think it's happening. But we're approaching winning time too and I am still checking baby's weights and there are, some of them are really not at that weaning weight that I like. Some of them are really close. I mean, they're not even, um, I think they're, what, six weeks old at this point and they're 19 pounds and they should be 20 pounds, at least 20 pounds by the time that they're eight weeks old to grow happy and healthy and those kids that are 19 pounds 16 pounds 18 pounds by now they are twins and so they're really not struggling not really fighting eating on their own and basically they're the healthiest and the strongest and the ones that I feel a hundred percent okay letting them go so it's really one of those things that you learn with time when you feel comfortable selling them and at this point I've learned that the more weight that they have on them by the eight weeks um, that's going to be the better for them in the long run with their health so um, I feel like it's been interesting having this many does in milk at the same time having only goats for the last three years next April is gonna be three years so it's really been interesting to have this many dose in milk. I promised myself I was gonna 
do hand milking for the first couple of months to make sure that I didn't struggle with any mastitis or any udder retention or any problems with their udders because I feel like at the beginning it's very easy for them to maybe you know have an uneven side or something that I can spot by hand milking and just seeing it itself and so it's going to get to the time where I'm going to start to put them in a milk milking machine and I think things are gonna be easier but I am not gonna say that it's been easy milking five moms in the morning it really is a chaotic time everyone wants to get in um, you know I just have to entertain the juniors in the back so they can eat then the moms are kind of all over the place trying to get in and then some want to get in but the minute that I open the door you know all of them want to get in but then when it, it's, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it is kind of stressful the morning time, the milking can be stressful some days. Some days they behave like princesses and they're the, in their best behavior. They don't, you know, they're not fidgety, they're not, but the younger girls are kind of a wild card. You never know what you're gonna get with them. However, it's all part of the experience and it's all part of finding new methods and new ways of doing things without, you know, without feeling discouraged. But if I sat here and said that everything is perfect and, you know, things are working just right and, and you know, then I would be lying 100%. Yes, it's lovely to have as much milk as we're getting every morning. And it's going to be lovely to milk in the morning and at night. I really want to do a morning and at night to kind of help with the milk production. But I'm also questioning myself because I do know the amount of time that it takes in the morning and at night to not only milk them but feed them and do everything that they need and the more goats that you have the more things that you have to do with each of them and of course that's going to take a lot of your time not that I don't like spending time with them but it's just um, a matter of how much stuff you have going on right at this time and you know how you can manage all the things or come up with ways to figure that out so I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to share with you a little bit of the other side of things when they're happening and going on and you know some things I feel like they're so small like the ear stuff I wasn't even going to mention it but I think it's important to share all of it and I think that my core audience uh, know where I'm coming from when I share these things so I truly appreciate you know having them uh, interested in this and if there's other people that just bump into this video and think that I'm just complaining it's just because they're not following the channel so thank you so much for being here today guys if you enjoy my content if you want to keep up with the girls with what's gonna happen with the babies please remember to subscribe leave a comment down below and I'll talk to you guys next time bye guys